is known as the Blue Planet. 70% of its surface is covered by ocean, and 97% of our biosphere, the living space on Earth, is in the sea. Here, life arose four billion years ago. Yet, as we look down from some 240,000 miles above Earth, the irony is that we know more about parts of space than we do about our marine world. Indeed, we've spent more time, energy and money getting to the moon than we have exploring the undiscovered two-thirds of the very planet we live on. Research by marine scientists in Scotland addresses many of these key questions. Scotland's hugely diverse coastline makes it a unique laboratory for marine research. And, perched on the western edge of that coastline, at Dunstaffnage near Oban, is the Scottish Association for Marine Science. SAMS was founded in 1884 by the father of marine science, Sir John Murray. Since then, and especially over the past decade, it has become one of the world's leading marine science establishments. It employs about 140 staff and is a collaborative centre of the UK Natural Environment Research Council. Importantly, SAMS is also a learned society with 500 members from around the world. SAMS as an organisation is, is quite unique. It's both a learned society, it's a charity. Um, it has, as part of its objectives, delivering research and education. With its fabulous location, scientific study at SAMS starts right on its doorstep. This is Dr Liz Cook. Believe it or not, she's looking for aliens. And no, not of the Martian type. I actually was working um, as part of a research project, a European research project, on a fish farm just around the corner from here, in, um, just around in Dunstaffnage Bay. And when I was pulling up some of my uh, settlement panels that I was using, um, I saw this uh, species, this skeleton shrimp that we'd never seen before. So bringing it back to the laboratory, we looked in all the books, couldn't find anything. And then in the end, we ended up contacting a uh, professor in Japan and he was able to sort of say, yeah, yeah, this is a Japanese shrimp. It's just never been documented before, so this was sort of quite a unique find for us here at SAMS. Invasive alien species, like the Japanese skeleton shrimp, can have devastating impacts on the structure of natural marine communities and their biodiversity. They may also cause huge economic losses to the aquaculture and fishing industries. Scientific diving is an important technique for studying coastal waters and SAMS has an experienced scientific dive team. This team also trains the wider UK marine science community through the National Facility for Scientific Diving. The decompression chamber required by the team also provides emergency services to the diving community on the west coast of Scotland. Now, this might just look like mud to you, but for thousands and perhaps millions of sea creatures, it's home sweet home. I look at worms in the mud not only around Scotland, but I also look at them in, on the sea mounts. These are these underwater mountains. Um, interesting fact, if you don't know, is that the tallest underwater mountain off Scotland is actually bigger than Ben Nevis, and it's called Anton Dawn. With an average ocean depth of around 4,000 metres, the deep sea is by far the largest ecosystem on our planet. For over 40 years, deep sea scientists at SAMS have been exploring the animals in the waters and in the seabed of the deep sea. We have deep sea ecologists here that are leaders in their field. They're phenomenal in the research that they undertake. They stretch from the Arctic down to the Antarctic, looking at all these flat sort of abyssal plains, looking at the underwater mountains. We've gone out to the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, lots and lots of places, and I think SAMS really is one of the leaders in terms of deep sea ecology within the UK. Animals in the seabed affect global climate in the long term by taking carbon out of biological circulation and storing it in the sediment. I have an interest in the carbon cycle, meaning how is carbon produced in the world and how is it degraded in the world, and that's quite a central question when we sort of think about uh, global change and climatic changes. Now, we normally associate coral reefs with the Caribbean or the coast of Australia. Yet here in Scotland, SAMs have discovered our very own coral reefs in the deep waters off Rockall and the Mingalay Reef in the Hebridean Sea. 
the position of Sam is very close to the Mingale Reef complex, which is an area that we discovered a few years ago. And that gives us an ideal model area for us to study. Only recently have we got the technology to discover them and to study them in any great detail. Back on dry land, the team in the Microbial and Molecular Biology Department investigate the biology and ecology of the smallest life forms in habitats throughout the world's seas and oceans. Here at SAMS we examine the biology and the ecology of marine microorganisms. Microbes are very small, they're invisible, we tend to easily overlook them. However, they're extremely abundant, very active and as a result they're responsible for processing a large amount of energy and materials for the marine ecosystem. This is the culture collection of algae and protozoa. In just a few of these fridges, scientists at SAMS keep the world's most diverse collection of tiny plants and animals as a repository of microbial diversity. We have here at, some, at present uh, around 3,000 uh, species. And uh, so and as probably that is maybe 1% as maximum what is out in the, in the ocean deliver a lot of uh, algae to universities, they're using that for teaching uh, and research. Another group is we deliver uh, algae for aqua farms and uh, so we deliver, the, uh, we provide these companies with uh, food organisms. The biochemical diversity in these tiny plants and animals is used by scientists to develop new products, for example for the pharmaceutical or the food industries. Other aspects of our research that we do here is also to do with manipulating these organisms, bacteria and algae, for biotechnological applications, production of polymers that are of interest to the food industry, healthcare, etc. And we're also looking at how to manipulate these organisms for the production of biofuels, such as biodiesel and ethanol. SAMS recognises the potential for marine biotechnology and has established the European Centre for Marine Biotechnology as a business incubator to encourage and promote the growth of new marine biotechnology companies. Uh, ECMB is, is an excellent location for a marine science-based company. There are excellent communications uh, facilities within ECMB. We have a close location to the marine environment. Glycomar Limited and the other tenants of ECMB benefit greatly from being co-located with SAMS at, at the ECMB site. SAMS quest for knowledge takes them quite literally to the ends of the earth. The polar ice caps of the Arctic Ocean and at times also the Southern Ocean around Antarctica. Here, SAM scientists study sea ice and ocean currents as well as polar biology and pollution. So SAMS has a real specialism in uh, Arctic field research, so really going out there, going into the environment, measuring what's there and bringing those results back and figuring out what's going on in the Arctic. So we, we go out on ships, we go out on helicopters, submarines, we put instruments in and leave them there for maybe a year or more collecting data in the environment. We collect uh, marine sediment cores from all around the world. From a core around the Antarctic, we once found uh, the leaf of a tree, uh, which is very interesting because about 40 million years ago, we can have a look at how the uh, climate of Antarctica supported temperate forests. I've been out to sea a couple of times on Royal Navy submarines. In 2004, we went up to the North Pole. We're measuring the thickness of ice across the Arctic Basin. Myself, as a member of SAMS, I'm only the third UK scientist to actually be allowed on board a submarine to collect ice thickness data. One common thread that runs through most areas of SAMS work is unravelling the causes, processes and events of past and present climate change and the impact it has not just on marine environments, but on the planet as a whole. The research work which we are doing, um, along with collaborators from other countries in the Arctic, is of tremendous importance in, um, in, in evaluating the effect of climate change. Um, and we are doing very, very important and key measurements of the ice thickness and the ice cap in the Arctic. And that forms part of the vital stat statistics that are going to influence policy on climate change. SAMS is no ivory tower of academia, but operates very much in the real world. Much of its research is aimed at improving the way we use and protect our seas. Some of this research is commercial, for marine industries, aquaculture, fishing, energy and mining. And it's an important resource for regulators monitoring the environment, for example for toxic algae. 
We have a variety of aquaculture projects here at SAMS and that includes improving the culture methods for animals such as these, the edible sea urchin, but we're also interested in developing sustainable aquaculture methods and that's why we're interested in learning how to culture these fantastic seaweeds useful for food but also of course now as a biofuel because these seaweeds can be readily digested to produce methane. A lot of the science that we um, learn and understand the processes we like to apply to real life problems for instance the mining in Papua New Guinea because Papua New Guinea is basically on the Pacific Rim Ring of Fire and it's full of gold and silver, copper and resources and the people want to be able to use these obviously to bring the country on but they have the problem of get rid of the waste so we are there to help them improve practices to ensure that it's sustainable, they don't ruin their environment by trying to use the resources that they have. Yes, I think the sort of business and commercial aspects are very important uh, to, to the organisation. Clearly funding is a, a key requirement and, and undertaking commercial work through our trading company subsidiary, Sam's Research Services Limited, is an important way of ensuring that the knowledge of science can be applied in a proper way. Three things really make Sam stand out from other marine research establishments. The breadth of its research, its interdisciplinary capabilities and its independent status. Teamwork at SAMS is crucial to how we work because we have so many interrelated groups of scientists and they can't do the, the science on their own. We have to work together as a group and that, that works extremely well. We, we can work between microbiology and physics, uh, geochemistry and chemistry and biology. From the very beginning, SAMS has been committed to education. Through its association with the future University of the Highlands and Islands, it provides the only multidisciplinary marine science degree course in Scotland, offering the marine scientists of tomorrow unique opportunities to learn from hands-on experience. I really like the fact that there's such a wide variety of subjects to choose from. You can diversify into what you'd like to do, but you've still got that background knowledge. Because it's such small class sizes, it's like one-to-one -one tuition. If you have any questions about anything you're stuck on, you can actually go and not only just talk to your lecturer, but talk to the relevant expert about what you need to do. There's plenty of opportunities for volunteer work um, closely related to marine science. Even in second year, we get the opportunity to go out on Sam's boat. I was accepted to go on a scientific cruise in October. So we spent um, two and a half weeks travelling from Iceland to Scotland. And it's something that I never expected to happen in a first year university course. SAMS, um, through its undergraduate degree course with the UHI, um, offers students a really quite unique opportunity in, in terms of field experience. And one of the, the newest opportunities that one offer to students is the opportunity to, to go up to the Arctic, spend a year there studying, um, working on the ice, working in, on the glaciers and, and really trying to get a feel of Arctic, the Arctic environment. An international group of more than 20 research students work at SAMS, benefiting from the modern facilities, the many different disciplines and the multitude of opportunities for fieldwork, all in an atmosphere that is both dynamic and friendly. As SAMS staff, facilities and scientific reputation continues to grow, so does the societal relevance of its research. With its expertise in climate change, aquaculture, invasive species, marine biotechnology and renewable energy, SAMS increasingly informs environmental policy in Scotland and all over the world. We are now scientific leaders, but we're also leaders in developing enterprise in this part of the world and world-class education. And that will continue to grow and, and deepen and our research influence will increase over the next 10 years. Looking to the future, one thing is certain. Thanks to marine scientists at SAMS and elsewhere, the human race will have a far greater understanding of the two-thirds of our world that so far remain the mare incognitum, the unknown sea.